So I wanted to talk about some things that I just got in the mail here. There's a couple of them here, still in the package and some out of the package already. These are uh, Digispark clones that I got from AliExpress. They were about $1.50 a piece, which is kind of funny because the at tiny chip that's on them is uh, the 85 and that's actually cheaper than just buying the chip itself so that's kind of nifty uh, so I got a couple projects just kinda started here uh, so this one uh, eventually is gonna turn into a foot pedal uh, switching system for a friend who does uh, streaming and uh, I'll put his name across the bottom here you can check out his Twitch channel. He's doing uh, Super Metroid streaming right now, so trying to beat the world record or something crazy like that. So hopefully this will help him out. So this is just actually a USB HID device. So uh, these buttons are mapped to uh, certain keys on the keyboard, and you press them, and it sends the command to the computer. Uh, so I tested it with Kerbal Space Program. And that seems to work just fine. There's a little bit of problem I'm having with uh, some uh, some switch bouncing, so I'll have to either software create a uh, a debounce or maybe a debounce circuit on uh, on these push buttons. But either way, this is working pretty good. Uh, so Digispark is actually pretty handy for uh, HID. Uh, one of the other popular things that people have been using Digispark for is a rubber ducky uh, kind of step in. So if you're not familiar with Rubber Ducky, it's a kind of a hacking pen testing tool where if you insert it into a computer, it can run scripts. Uh, this one, all I did was just solder on a uh, WS2812 single uh, pixel. I guess they're also known as NeoPixels from Adafruit. So I bought a hundred. All in, all, well, they were in a sheet, and then I broke it. So, so. Uh, uh, these eventually are going to go on the back of my monitor and replace the strip I have of WS2812s because they keep falling off because the two-sided tape that uh, they use is garbage. So, uh, so the, I mean, these things are Arduino compatible. You can use the IDE, you can use the uh, ISP to flash them. These have their own uh, microcode, their bootloader, whatever you want to call it. It's called Micro Nucleus. So the reason behind it being custom is, I mean, number one, space. These are quite limited on uh, RAM and uh, flash storage. So, But one of the other neat things is, is this has a micro USB port on it here. And uh, it, it uses two of the pins, I think it's three and four, to actually uh, communicate over USB. So you don't need to uh, have a programmer to do it uh, like you would if you were just going to flash the uh, at tiny directly so that's what's kind of nice about the uh, the digispark is just you plug it in uh, if, I think it's uh, maybe five or seven seconds that it remains as a flashable device and then it switches over to whatever software code you you put on it so uh, so let me open one of these guys up I guess So in these little cheap packages, you get some uh, some pin headers, and you don't need to use the pin headers. I mean, I didn't on this one. I just soldered the wires. Or, sorry, just solder the wires straight in. Just some solid strand wire, so I could just fiddle with the pixel. So let's see if I can bring this in some. So this is what you get. I mean, it's really small. I mean, there's your uh, your 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 at tiny. So you got micro USB port. You've got uh, your voltage regulator, and uh, there's two LEDs on here. You can see one here and one here. So one's power, and one is like how the Arduino's have uh, pin 13. So it's very similar. I think it's pin. I think it's pin uh, two, maybe. I think that uh, it's connected to. I'm not sure on that. So these are obviously clones. So I don't think. Digispark or Digistump or whatever they call themselves 
released a board that looked like this. I mean, maybe, I'm not 100% sure. They, their primary one is just, it, it almost looks like a flash drive and you plug it straight into the drive, or into the port on the computer. So I do have a couple of those coming, but this is what came first. So, not much to it at all, it's very small. Got some some standoff holes, I guess. And your, uh, your pins down here, so uh, zero to, uh, to five. So I'm pretty sure it's, well, maybe two and three. Or three and four are the USB lines. So if you're going to program those for USB lines, I think you have to have an ability to switch them. Or else uh, you might run into troubles what if you're uh, powering it through micro USB. Uh, another problem that I actually encountered uh, when I was setting up... Uh, here, let's come out, I guess. When I was trying to set up the uh, this HID uh, interface was pin 5. Every time I would press pin 5, uh, it would uh, it would actually reset the, the DigiSpark. So after reading some some articles and stuff on it, it turns out uh, these Chinese clones. So what's happening is is they're not uh, changing the fuse on pin 5 to be non-resettable. So you lose that as an input when you buy these Chinese clones. So you need to load up AVR dude and uh, tell it to not be a reset pin anymore. So I did that on this one, but I haven't done it on, on this one, mostly because I'm only using one pin anyway. But uh, it's, it's, it's pretty easy, and uh, I'll show you that in just a second on how to do it. To do that, to actually manually flash these with either the boot code or, or bootloader, whatever it's called, uh, you have to have pin 5 set to resettable, so they're just not flagging it properly at the end, so it's not really a big deal. But if you need that extra pin, you will need to do this procedure. For this part, we're going to need an Arduino, some hookup wire, and of course, the DigiSpark. Wiring up the Arduino and the DigiSpark is pretty straightforward. I'll put a guide here up on the screen. And I'll also put it down in the description in case it's too hard to follow. To load up the example sketch for the Arduino ISP, it's right there. So once that's loaded up, we make sure we select the correct board of our Arduino. And of course the correct COM port as well. And then make sure that the ISP is selected for Arduino. And then upload it to your Arduino. And this will take a little bit longer than normal. It's a kind of a large sketch so we'll uh, just see it go through here alright so bring up a command prompt here and I hope you already have AVR dude installed if not I'll leave a, a link right here for the Windows version of it and I already have my commands set out here but uh, I'll put those in the description so you can see them a little better so all we're doing is just reading the fuse and confirming that it is set incorrectly. And then we're going to rewrite this fuse so that it's no longer a reset. It's going to just be a standard data pin. Okay, there we go. So we're all set. So now that pin 5 or 6, depending on what number you're looking at, is uh, ready to go. As always, thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and check out my other videos.